Welcome to Growth Marketer Academy with Ryan and Andrea Eldridge. With 2 billion active monthly users, your customers are most definitely on Facebook. But reaching them at the right time with the right message takes more than putting up an image and an offer. Facebook offers a unique opportunity to build brand awareness and engage with new and existing customers. Today, we're sharing the secret to building a Facebook campaign that can, with some nurturing, convert engaged leads into loyal customers. This is Ryan Eldridge. And this is Andrea Eldridge. Welcome to Growth Marketer Academy. This is episode 22 of the Growth Marketer Academy podcast. I'm Ryan Eldridge, Chief Strategist at Squirrel Digital Marketing. And this is Andrea Eldridge, Creative Director at Squirrel Digital Marketing. Well, we all know that traffic is fundamental to generating leads. It's a pretty basic concept, and you need to steer qualified traffic to your site if you want to make sales. Yeah, you usually have two options. You can invest time and man hours trying to do organic or, or SEO, mm -hmm. or you can invest money into paid search advertising. And we've said it before, you should use paid search to gather information and hone your campaign before you invest the time and effort into building your SEO campaign because that's going to take a lot, a lot of time and effort to build yeah. and you don't want to build it with incorrect information. So paid search has some great benefits. And it's not all about Google. I mean, Facebook, it's, it's different from AdWords. People aren't actively looking for a solution on Facebook. They're looking to engage with friends and family, relax, unwind, and look at cat videos. Yeah. You know? So, you know, throwing up an ad on Facebook can be disruptive to that user experience. So your job is really to tailor your message and kind of just gently guide potential customers down your sales funnel. Well, this is going to be a two-part series. You love those two-parters. I know. We just finished one earlier. But <laughs> um, we're going to be covering how to determine which types of Facebook ads to run and how to set up an ad that converts. That's right, so let's get to it. First, why choose Facebook? Well, really, Facebook right now is the equivalent to 15, 20 years ago, ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, yeah. the Wall Street Journal. It's, it is where everyone is. They just go to hang out and watch videos and just chill. Yeah, and yeah. so it's, yes, it's more of a relaxation platform. It's not necessarily a place where you go specifically to look for anything just more for entertainment. Yeah, and one of the best parts of Facebook is it gives us some really deep understanding and guidance towards what kinds of customers or, or, or what our customers are looking for when they're not relaxing, when they are in a, a more discovering state of looking for our offers. So we can find out things like what websites they go to, um, what behaviors they do on websites. Uh, we can see what kinds of searches they're searching for. Um, possibly even target specific behaviors like they just recently searched how to do something online. So, And this is based on Facebook's more um, aggressive tracking methods yes. that they utilize even once that Facebook user has left the Facebook platform. Yeah. They still have information being gathered about them by Facebook, which you as a marketer have access to in building your audience, which can make a very um, specific audience group much more possible yeah. than on other platforms. In, in the old days of, of television advertising, you're, you essentially know your demo, right? You, you know, men, you, men over this age, women over this age, they watch in, you know, the whatever, these specific shows, the yeah. NCIS or the CSI <laughs> yeah. Miami or whatever. We know that these kinds of people watch, but that doesn't really tell you a lot other than their sex and their age. And really, it's just a guesstimate. You don't really know that 45 million people are watching, you know, the Grammys. That's just an estimate. They're guessing. Yeah. Whereas on Facebook, you know exactly how many people you can target. You know exactly what they're into, what what exact their age is. I mean, you can go all the way down to the absolute minutia. So if you've got a, uh, an offer that sells uh, uh, key rings, for example, you can say, well, I'm only going to target people that own a car. And I'm only, only target people that... Uh, that are you know 25 years old and i want to target only people that have lost their keys in the last 25 no not really but <laughs> yeah you can't get that specific yeah. but pretty close but it's interesting that you bring up the correlation between facebook and television because it's also similar in the style of marketing um that that it incorporates it's interruption marketing you know you're basically you're interrupting people who are on the platform for something else whether it be you know to watch a news program or you know in, in television watch their show or in facebook communicate with their friends and get updates on their you know the 
vacation their former best high school buddy you just went on that they're now jealous about anyway so basically the the challenges that were apparent and inherent in television and radio advertising are inherent in the Facebook platform as well because you're having to interrupt them in Mm -hmm. the midst of doing an activity that they're not expecting to be advertised to they're not in the mindset of being advertised to and so it requires a very specific type of messaging in order to make that effective Um, but ultimately I mean when it comes to Facebook you really have to be active where people are listening and people are active and engaged on Facebook and so it makes sense to try to reach your target audience but you need to do so in such a way that is as um, as cohesive with the messaging on Facebook as possible which we'll get to in a moment so unless you're targeting only people between the age of 18 and 22 your customers are probably on Facebook. Yeah, and you say that because obviously the younger demographic kind of shuns Facebook these days yeah. um, in you know, honor of other platforms well, like the, Snapchat and Instagram. And But keep in mind that, that Facebook is is uh, also owns Instagram. Instagram is the fastest growing social network as of the summer of 2018. It's the fastest growing social network. They're doing all kinds of cool things. They're killing Snapchat now in terms of users and daily daily active users. But Facebook is still king when you're looking for engaging with an audience. Yeah. If you want to go a little younger, Instagram, and I would say probably the next three or four years, uh, you should be using your Facebook platform to get into uh, Instagram advertising. But for now, at this exact moment, Facebook still rules. Well, and I know from a perspective of, you know, even just as a parent that has kids, and they're involved in activities and every activity always has a Facebook group because it's just it's where they expect you to be yeah. and so even those people who are like ah, I don't really use Facebook end up on the platform just to be able to stay engaged with these groups that are set up yeah. um, for school or work or business so nearly half of all Americans use Facebook also as a news source yeah that's uh, kind of frightening isn't it when you think about that statistic but basically Facebook and other prevalent social channels are like you said the modern equivalent to network news giants um, The interesting thing, too, is that you certainly wouldn't be alone for marketing on Facebook. 96% of marketers favor Facebook over other social media platforms. Just based on the structure and the type of activity that people are doing there, they stay on page longer. Um, We mentioned in the intro, it has nearly 2 billion active monthly users. So your potential to reach an audience is really unparalleled to the other social networks that you could currently target these days. So if you're going to target a social network, Facebook is really the way to go. And mo- more importantly is the people that are on Facebook are engaged on Facebook. It's That's not right. a passive experience for most people. They've got to scroll, they've got to look, you know, they're on their phone. It's, it's a relatively intimate experience. And Facebook users spend an average of 35 minutes per day yes. on the platform. It is a time suck for those of us that uh, don't like to be distracted. Well, 35 so, minutes. Take advantage of that from that's a like marketing a, perspective. That's like a primetime show, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to watch uh, an episode of a sitcom or something, you're going to spend 30, 35 minutes watching something on television. So that's about the same amount of time. But Just with spread Facebook. Spread out into 10 minute increments exactly. all throughout your day. Well, you know, from my perspective, you know, um, well, I don't know if listeners know, but I am generally understood to be the cheap one in our family. I like to say frugal, but, you know, we'll go with whatever works. This is why I have more shoes than you. Yes, yes, that's true. And so what I like about Facebook is that compared to other advertising channels, it's actually really cheap. The average cost per click for a Facebook ad in the United States is like 26 cents, which compared to most AdWords um, campaigns is like incredibly rock bottom and expensive. And that's statistics from from Ad Espresso, but it's a little bit old. It's uh, two years old. So that was in 2016. It was 26 cents. It's gone up since then. And Facebook's inventory has gotten tighter, which means that they're charging you more to show your ads more often uh, because there's just not as many places to. So keep in mind that that's a slightly old statistic, but it was the most current we could find. Way to bust my bubble. Whatever. All right. The other bonus is that you can get great analytics. You mentioned this before in terms of um, the types of things that Facebook tracks, um, as well as tracking off-platform. And that ultimately adds up to really great analytics for your campaigns. And instant analytics, right? I mean, you can know within an hour if your if your Facebook ad is working or not. Whereas, it, it, again, let's go back to the old days. You, you'd spend all this time crafting an ad or, uh, for a newspaper or you'd craft an ad for a television commercial and then spend all this time and money in production and creation and then get it out there and then not know for weeks whether or not it did anything. Maybe yeah. if, maybe your direct response, you know, you're selling like, you know, magazine subscriptions or something 
something, you can you, if the phone rang, ah, it must be working, right? Yeah. But but in reality, in, in Facebook time, we can know within minutes, seconds even, whether people are responding to our ad and whether it's good or not. And the benefit there is you can make adjustments to the style and the copy um, more quickly than other marketing channels yeah. because you can really react really quickly if for some reason it's not as successful or it, maybe it's generating the wrong kind of lead than what you were really looking yeah. for. And nowadays, I'd say within the last five years or so, people have gotten used to seeing ads in their Facebook feed. They've sort yeah. of accepted that they're there, which means that they're going to also accept them on other platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. They, they just, it's now expected. Whereas when Facebook first started, there were no ads. Yeah. And then when they added them, it was like this really like, what? What yeah. is that? And yeah, now you just expect that I'd say probably at least a quarter of your news feed is yeah. going to be ads. <laughs> But most of the ads are still relatively uh, un, 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 unobtrusive. Un, unobtrusive. Yeah, they're designed to blend in um, with the experience that you're already having. And that's the whole point. That's what Facebook wants. And it's going to really, um, I don't know what we're Not interrupt the user experience. Well, f I was basically saying that Facebook would um, give preferential, like, I don't know that that's true, but they're they're going to prefer they those ads well, that are inobtrusive to the user experience. They're going to give a higher relevancy score to ads that are getting engaged with, shared, liked, uh, commented on, things like that. They're going to give a higher relevancy score, which drives down your cost, which makes your ads run more often because you won't be using up your budget. Because if you let's say you have a budget of ten dollars a day and your ad sucks. And nobody likes it. Nobody comments on it. Everybody's reporting it, saying this is a terrible ad. Yeah, uh, you're going to spend that ten bucks showing it to three people. Yeah, but if you've got a really awesome ad that everybody loves and engaging with and watching your videos and doing all your stuff, that ten dollars is going to spread throughout the entire day. Like those those adorable purple uh, ones that I was like super in love with with the. Uh, Yeti and no, it's not the Yeti. It's Bigfoot and the family, and they're talking about the mattresses. Oh my God, those got shared like crazy because they were a great campaign. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm sure that that campaign had a huge reach uh, and uh, much less expensive. So let's talk about what makes Facebook ads unique. So Facebook knows a ton of stuff about your potential customer, their age, location, the pages they like, the groups they participate in, the events they show an interest in. And this gives you as a marketer a huge advantage because you can really target um, a really tight audience. Facebook's algorithm also chooses relevant ads to show a user because it wants users to see ads that don't feel disruptive or out of place. So most Facebook ads displayed in a user's newsfeed um, are going to be designed to mimic native content. Yeah. Desktop users, on the other hand, they sometimes will see ads actually on the sidebar. Um, I so rarely access Facebook on my desktop anymore that yeah. I never see those sidebar ads. So, you know, just kind of as a note, but they're that still you're there. probably not going to get yeah. as much play from those sidebar ads. But again, in the ultimate, you know, expectation of what Facebook is going for, they don't prevent the user from scrolling down their feed, and so they don't disrupt the user experience. Yeah, and most people just kind of tune them out, but but there might be something there that catches someone's eye. You can also be on the uh, Facebook audience network, and what this does is it lets you extend Facebook ads onto other platforms and websites. It appears like native content or video ads. Uh, it just in further increases your reach, especially if you're uh, let's say on your newsfeed, you're a big uh, fan of Parenting Magazine, for example, and you click on a story and you go into this piece of content they have, Facebook will actually put their ads from their audience network into the content. And so if you're selling a parenting product, you're literally getting space on parenting.com on Facebook where you could normally get that in real life. So Facebook offers a number of different formats for their ads. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, it comes down to deciding what kind of ad you feel will best reach your target audience. Yeah. So um, regardless of the Facebook ad format that you choose, your ads need to be able to encourage um, a click-through so that users leave Facebook and visit your website. Facebook actually doesn't really want you to do this, but the longer they stay on Facebook, the more they're going to get distracted. So you really want to encourage that click and go elsewhere or at least go to a specific landing page encourage that action to take 
that user to your yeah. more defined and, and expanded message. And, and Facebook does have cert, uh, different ad types. We're going to go over sort of like the most popular, but there are other ad types that work in different businesses. So if you're just looking for an opt-in form for a specific piece of content, they do have literally forms you can put in there. They've got messenger ads. They've got all kinds of different ads. But what we want to do is just go over some of the basics, give you some highlights. Uh, Facebook's constantly changing. And so there are possibly new ad formats that will come by the time you hear this episode. So yeah. just keep in mind that, that you know, this isn't at, at all going to be an all, whatever, I don't know. Every possible ad format exactly. that will ever be offered, but just more of the more common ones there and is. which audiences and objectives those will best reach. Yeah. All right. So we included in the show notes um, a picture that was um, actually kind of interesting because it broke down a a static image ad and said, you know, these are kind of the primary components um, and where they appear and what's necessary when you craft your ad. So, you know, it mentioned some of the highlights that we'll go into more detail on in a few moments. But if you just kind of want a quick overview, it basically shows you want a short and punchy headline. You want an appropriate landing page URL. So you want to make sure that your URL isn't this long, weird address that isn't clear where the person's going to be going. Sales dot my website.com slash I'm going to sell you everything <laughs> slash buy now slash yesterday, today, right? tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't, that wouldn't no. be great. Um, you basically, you want to start off at the top of your ad with something um, that's relatively intriguing in terms of text wise, but know with a static image ad that that's really where the bulk of your text is going to appear. So, um, but something that's going to uh, like encourage someone to click on the message uh, again, unique and eye-catching high-quality image. If you're going to use a high quali- uh, static image ad um, or the same applies for video, you always want to make sure that it looks in like looks good because yeah. otherwise you're just wasting your time. And it should also be appropriate with what you're talking about. Yes. I've, I've seen so many ads where some guy's like skipping rocks and then he turns around and he says, you know, I'm here to tell you about how to get Propecia or something. Or there's, you know, some other ad where it's like a cartoon of like a cat beating up a mouse and then all of a sudden they're like, we're here to talk about, you know, air conditioning. And you're like, what are you, what? what? Yeah. yeah. It's like, they're they're literally sense. using these weird images or these weird videos or, or or gifts just or whatever to catch your just to catch your attention but it feels you tricked yeah and, and you don't like it and nobody likes being tricked it and so they dishonest yeah, and yeah so they just scroll past it so yeah. just don't do it even if you if even if you get a lot of clicks on those ads you're not going to get a lot of customers on those ads that's right and so. they're not going to be the right ones they're yeah. not going to convert for you all right so um the most common ad formats i know you mentioned this isn't all of them but some of the most common ones the, clearly the static image ad yeah that's really the kind of the and it, what used to be the leader, although they're really um, pushing more towards video, but yeah. we'll start with the image ad. But it, it, essentially, it's an ad that appears in the newsfeed. It's just an image, a, a, a nice image with usually some accompanying text. And then there's usually a CTA, something like download now or click here or shop now and there or know be. more or <laughs> learn more or whatever. The goal is basically that clicking anywhere on the ad is going to lead them away from Facebook if you can manage to do so. Um, so you want to upload an engaging, but as you said, relevant, clickable image um, that is relevant to your offer, makes sense with what it is that you're trying to do um, or not offer, but even just what your, you know, what your intent of your ad is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Facebook has a recommended image size of, uh, I'm going to let you say that. Because 1,200 by 628 pixels for best quality. But keep in mind, if you use that format, that is sort of a, a, a letterbox type format, and that won't work with Instagram. And when you're using Facebook's ad platform, you can place the exact same ad also on Instagram. So if you're using an image ad, which would work perfectly on Instagram, you got to be careful that you, if you're going to use the 1,200 by, uh, what is it, was it? You scroll past it. 1,200 by 628, you might want to consider, instead of using a letterbox format, using what's more considered a portrait mode. Mm. And you can get all of these different sizes and stuff uh, just by looking at Facebook ad, uh, just doing a Google search basically for Facebook ad formats and it'll give you a bunch of different sizes. Yeah, I mean, obviously the the main thing you want to avoid here is crafting this perfect image and then realizing as you go to post it that it looks really wonky when you try yeah. and get it to load in the ad format. So um, check out your image and resolution recommendations before you go too far into creating that, you know, ideal image. 
But make sure your image tells a story. Make sure that uh, it captures attention and it leaves a lasting impression, just like any other image. If, if you were going to be posting a picture of your kids on vacation in Punta Cana, which we just were at, uh, <laughs> if you're going to post an image of that to show your friends and family, you're not going to choose an ad that is just like, look at the back of my kid's head while we were walking to breakfast, yeah. right? You're going to choose an ad that tells a story that, that's interesting and, and maybe even provocative, like, oh, look at that. I, I want to know more about what's going on in this ad or this video or this picture or whatever. And it's the thing that's going to stop them from scrolling yeah. so you want to make sure if you're using a static image ad that that image is worthy of stopping yeah and for the love of god no stock photos oh gosh yeah stay oh, away from man. it yeah, yeah. stay no. away from it. You, yeah. what you're trying to do ultimately in an image ad is sort of mimic what they would normally see on facebook so you amateur is better than real professional footage, right? So if you've got like a really great professional photo, unless you're doing wedding photography, stay away from it. That's right? true. You, yeah. you want to go look something that's kind of looks like you'd use your phone to take a picture. And not everyone who uses a phone can take good pictures. So maybe slightly off center, maybe a little grainy, maybe with a little filter on it, something like that would all be fine and acceptable. But if it's a perfectly shot, beautiful scene of a beach, you know, and your book, people are going to be like, oh, that's Nat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then the next one uh, is clearly becoming the ad leader would yeah. be video ads. Yeah. Facebook prioritizes video content in the news feed. Hold on. Yeah. 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 Ambulance. Yeah. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sounds like we're at a rave. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Okay. So another format of, of ads other than image ads are video ads. Uh, Facebook prioritizes video content in the newsfeed. Videos uh, now also autoplay. Not everyone is autoplay now. They've, they've actually de determined that not everybody enjoys all of their ads getting autoplayed. Have you noticed your ads have stopped being autoplayed? They auto play. Well, mine still do. I think yeah. I opted in to allow that. Oh, uh, see, I to said still be the no. Case. Yeah, I don't want to see that crap. <laughs> yeah. So keep in mind that, that your 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 ad may auto play or it may not auto play. Ah, but it on the also user. video gives a uh, just great reach. I mean, we've done multiple tests with multiple campaigns, multiple products, different brands, and the video ads always always convert better. I, I, you know, image ads, we really want them to work because they're so quick and easy to put up. Video takes a little bit of time and energy, but they they just get better results. Yeah. Well, although I will say it probably depends on what it is that you're selling to a certain extent. Would you agree in terms of like if if you're selling, I don't know, like a webinar or a static item, like a picture of the item versus like a video yeah. about it? Like I mean, we did that. Shirt we did that for shoes? we did that for a credit union client of ours, and we did we did a, a static image ad versus a video ad, and, and the video ads just worked every time. Well, and now that I even say yeah. the words aloud, it occurs to me that you're not really using Facebook as a platform to direct sell anyway. And yeah. so, I mean, for the most part, some some products have done well with the direct yeah. sell campaign, um, but the video just generally does a better job at selling what it is that you're trying yeah. to sell because you just have more time to be engaging yeah it's and it's more interesting to look at you're, yeah. you're gonna pay more attention to it but if you're gonna use video make sure that you uh, get a transcript now Facebook will give you a transcript it's not always perfect so you might want to look at it before sure you apply you read it. through your transcript yeah before you just post it but <laughs> you can get that little closed caption transcript at the bottom of your video so you can roll it because even though they autoplay they auto they don't autoplay with sound um, and often if I'm at Facebook or if I'm at uh, Starbucks or something and I, I'm looking at a, a Facebook feed, I'm not going to have my sound on. Mm -hmm. And if I did, <laughs> you know, yeah. that'd be you crazy. You would instantly turn it off so. so that no one knew that you were watching cat videos. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and, and also for old people like me, I like captions anyway. So <laughs> just put the stinking captions on there. Well, the nice part is though, is it gives more of your message to those of us that a, have the auto run feature, auto play feature in a engaged because I know for me, I will actually click on an ad and allow it to fully run maybe like 1% of the time. It's got to really catch me. But there's, I mean, I would say at least out of the remaining video ads, 50% of them, I'll sit and read through and let it play me 
without sound, but just with the transcript on yeah. its autoplay, the first like at least 30 seconds of the majority of the videos that I see just to see if I want to watch any further. Yeah. Your percentages so, are way off on that. You I said know, yeah, 1% sorry. and then 50%. And then well, because so the other f- 49% I don't watch at all. Oh, like, okay. I don't even like Wow, stop you watch 50% of the video ads you get. Well, oh my gosh. Of videos We should general. target you Not necessarily hardcore video ads, but yeah. Yeah, apparently you got to look me up. Anyway, yeah, completely random statistics. That is why you know I don't make up the statistics, because when I do make them up, they sound terrible and they're (laughs) horrible. So clearly I get my statistics from actual sources. But video ads allow you to engage passive viewers and they can see the expanded message without having to actually click to hear the audio or go over and see your offer, right? They can just kind of passively accept and see what it is. That's right. So another interesting one um, format, ad format, is carousel ads. A carousel ad is basically like 10 photo ads lumped together as Mm -hmm, one. mm -hmm. And I don't actually see these very often, but I know that a lot of product manufacturers, things like, you know, that are selling a shirt or shoes or something like that, will use this style of ad to basically allow static images but with like more detail and more content and more engagement Um, basically it lets the user scroll horizontally to view those additional images and each one of those images can link to the same cta or a different cta Um, and so as i mentioned it's really it's really conducive to showcasing a specific product demonstrating how to use your service or, you know, if you're really creative, maybe telling a story through pictures. Yeah. I've seen Amazon use carousel ads in order to show multiple products that, that I've looked at while on Amazon. And it'll mm-hmm. be kind of like, hey, remember you were looking at this and this and this and this. And so while they're not necessarily related products, they are related to me products. So ah. I might see some shoes. I might see some camping gear. I might see like a camera. And then I might see, you know, um, shoes for you, I guess. I don't know. So. Yeah, and I think the format, just again, it's it's more active and more engaging visually than a single static image. Yeah. So if you don't want to go through the effort and time and editing process of creating a video, um, this carousel ad style is certainly an upgrade from a static image ad, um, likely to convert better um, for the right product or service. So we've thrown up on the show notes an example of a carousel ad, which is kind of engaging. It's got multiple pictures and it kind of tells a story. Uh, so if you want to check that out, head on over to uh, growthmarketeracademy.com and check out the show notes for episode 22. So another format is collection ads. Yeah, now this is a little bit different from a carousel ad. It's a collection of ad formats that lets you pair an image or a video ad with four additional images within a single ad. Hmm. Sounds kind of confusing, right? Yeah. So, But it lets you create an immersive experience and complement your main featured ad with themes and stories. So it's kind of like having a landing page within an ad all on Facebook. So you don't, you're not asking the user to do a ton of stuff. Once they see the ad, they click it, and then they've got all these other options just kind of open up below it. You know, well, yeah. so it's uh, this. It doesn't take you out of your newsfeed to go to a landing page. It literally just extends the ad into their newsfeed a little bit further, and they can kind of engage with the rest of the ad. So, well, and it seems like the times when this is most effective is when it starts with a header video, and then the static images are below that video. Yeah. Um, either to give snap images of something that is, you know, featured in the video yeah. that they might be interested in seeing more about, and then it allows the viewer to basically click on that static image and go, "Oh, well, I liked the jacket that was shown there, or I like that bag um, that was in the video." And then the video is more, you know, entertainment yeah. style telling a story of seeing those products in action. Like we, we put up a, another version or a, an example of this up in the show notes so you can kind of see what we're talking about. But mm-hmm. you know, places that would really work great on this is e-commerce. Is yeah. Imagine if the, you did a, I don't know why nobody does this. They should totally do this. Everyone steal <laughs> this idea. This is awesome. <laughs> so when the Oscars happen, Or when the Grammys show up or whenever you just see, you know, on Us Magazine where they go like, you know, who wore it best and they show different pictures or they'll say like, you know, the the celebrities kids and they're all in their different little clothes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they? Because people who are into Us Weekly are super easy to target on Facebook. Why wouldn't they say, hey, look at this picture of these three kids wearing these three different clothes that are famous celebrities. And then when they're looking at it, all of a sudden it pops down below and it shows where you could buy each one of those items. Or knockoff. Versions yeah, or that are, you know, versions, actually right? significantly yeah. less expensive. Yeah. Why? Why don't 
people do that. I mean, that just makes sense. Like, if I'm into celebrities and I'm into celebrity watching and I see Kim Kardashian wearing a, a particular thing or whatever, I would totally click on that. Oh, I'm buying it. Don't be like Kim. Yeah, you know, I think I that uh, they do it in magazines um, because they do. They show you where you can buy yeah. the item that you saw on this person. Um, but, I'm going to start you know, following I, Us Weekly and People say, Magazine on Facebook and see if that happens. I follow social media yeah. in terms of uh, that would just celebrity magazine. Every time I, I Kate do. Middleton walked out or, or Meghan Merkel walked out of her door wearing something fancy hat, you know, I would sell a shoot ton of that stuff. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, that's just a few of the various ad formats that you can pick from. But really, amongst all these choices, how do you decide which ad type to use? So some ad types are naturally better suited for certain objectives than others. We're just talking about e-commerce for one particular ad type. So for an example, let's say your objective is to gather leads. Okay. Uh, running an image ad that leads users to an ungated blog post would kind of be a mismatch, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to see this image, they're going to, oh, and then all of a sudden they're off Facebook and they're onto this other, th and they're like, I don't know what I, what's happening here. Yeah, and I mean, if, if your objective is to gather leads and just sending them to blog content, they're going to be like, okay, that was great. And then yeah. go right back to Facebook. So, uh, it's and, and if your CTA is like, sign up for my newsletter because, yeah. because I'm in 1982. <laughs> and ultimately, this is going to negatively impact the effectiveness of your ad campaign yeah. if you don't properly match your ad type with your objective. So um, the nice part is, is that Facebook really structures their whole ad creation process around starting with choosing your objective and they help you to match your objective with an ad type by um, asking you to select where that potential target is in your sales funnel. Yeah. So when you go to your ad and ads manager, you're gonna see basically it says, what's your marketing objective? And it actually has columns, awareness, consideration, conversion, and then breaks those down into under awareness. Is it brand awareness? Is it reach? Consideration, are you looking for traffic, engagement, app installs, video views? When you select one of those options, it will really help you to tailor the ad that Facebook recommends for the objective that you are looking for. It also allows Facebook to decide once your audience starts uh, engaging with your ad, which ones are going to be most effective. Like for an example, if you, you obviously click on every freaking video ad you see, as <laughs> I, you just I said. I don't actually. I just let them autoplay and I just. They're tracking that. They, yeah, know, how know, they know how long how, I, yeah. I let it play. I so know. they would say you would be in a specific category. If I'm running a video ad, Facebook would show my video ad more likely to you than somebody like me who has my autoplay turned on off, who I quickly scroll past that stuff because I don't want anybody to know, I don't want to see any of that stuff. Yeah. So you're going to sh be shown that content more often than I am. So one of the, th the things about choosing your objective is everybody freaks out about choosing your objective. It's really confusing. And there are probably a million blog articles about how to choose your objective. But if you just think about it this way, what is it ultimately that you're trying to accomplish? And if you're goal is to drive traffic to your website, guess what? You're going to choose the traffic objective. If your goal is, I just want I just want to let people know that I've got flowers for sale. Well, that's more brand awareness, you know, or I just want people to opt into my, my webinar. That's going to be conversion. So you just have to really be honest with yourself about what you're looking for. Because as I look at that, when I first was exposed to this sort of thing, I'd go, oh, well, I want all of those. Yeah. I want traffic. I want conversion. I want brand aware. I want them all at the same time. Well, you can't have them all. You'd have to run 15 different ad campaigns, all with different objectives, which you certainly can and probably will at some point. But when you're setting up your first ad campaign, what's the most important right now? So the other thing, I mean, obviously, I think if you ask most marketers what your objective is and make them narrow it down to one, they're going to all say, well, I want to sell my stuff. Mm -hmm. But the other key factor here to keep in mind is what um, process your leads are in, in terms of knowing about you and your company. You can't just start with a sell, sell, sell conversion ad to people who've never heard of you before um, and ha don't have any trust in your brand and aren't like familiar with you. So you should ask yourself, do you have an existing website? Do you have an email list that you already market to? A new business venture is going to have to start with awareness. You just, you can't skip the sales funnel process and go right to the end, or you're going to put the money into an ad that everybody's going to feel is disruptive and like, 
They're going to be like, why are you just trying to sell me this pair of shoes when I've never even heard of you yeah. know this company or brand before? But an established brand that has Facebook followers, that's already got um, a Facebook community of people that are engaged and interested in your brand, you do have more options mm -hmm. in terms of how you approach that messaging. So just, just to put a little bit of a spin on that is, you know, the, ultimately, we're saying that it is less likely to work. It doesn't mean that it won't work. That's you certainly true. can. Uh, you know, you, you take Billie Jean Marketing down in San Diego. Uh, he built an entire business on doing direct sales in Facebook with mm -hmm. these, you know, taking service businesses like yoga places, chiropractors, uh, the cryotherapy where they can freeze your fat off, stuff like that. <laughs> doing specific ads, running uh, campaigns of like coupons or gift cards or certain percentages off or sales or whatever. He does that, uh, but you have to have a really tight targeting. You have to have relatively good ads. Um, and you're still going to spend a lot of money uh, to run those ads. Though the method that we favor is a little bit more of a slow bill. It, it takes a little more time, ends up costing roughly the same as a direct sales ad, but it'll just takes a little more time, a little more energy, but likely your sales will stick better. Because you're basically building an audience that's engaged and interested in your messaging before you try to sell them something. Yeah, exactly. Like if, okay. if, if I'm selling watches on the street, hey, take a look at all these Rolexes, right? It'd be better to know the guy's already interested in Rolex and he's already been into three Rolex stores that day and he's already price shopped Rolexes. Then when I go, hey, you want to buy a Rolex? He's going to be like, well, yeah, <laughs> actually I do. <laughs> all right. So the now let's talk really about the most common ad offers used by marketers at each stage, just so that you can decide if that works for you as well. So if you're in the raise awareness stage, the ads here are really clearly designed to increase brand visibility. They are best when they provide users value without asking for anything in return. So this isn't the stage where you're going to be asking them to provide you with, you know, even an email address or, you know, you're not going to put anything in between what they see and what you want to show them to develop that start of that relationship with your brand. And this, you'll see this a lot on YouTube instead of just Facebook where people will create an ad around like say a review of a product mm -hmm. or they'll do a, a quick how-to video and here's how to do something. We, we talked about uh, one that we had a how-to video on how to light your pilot light on your, yep, water, on your heater. water heater. These are all things that are educational or entertaining that aren't asking me to do anything other than engage with this ad for, for as long as it's there. Well, and if you were a plumber or a water heater sales company, then you could create that video and your Facebook ad would be to basically promote that video without yep. requiring that people give you an email address or provide their name or information. Just you're showing it to them saying... Hey, if you have a problem with your water heater, here's how you fix it. Like yeah. you're providing information, establishing yourself as a source of information. Your goal here is to get users to follow your brand page and engage with future offers. In this raise awareness stage, you're not doing the offer itself. Correct. So some ad styles that are good for raising awareness would be, um, as we started to mention, promoting ungated content. So these ads lead users to a specific piece of valuable content, ideally on your website. Again, because you want to, if you can, get them off of Facebook so that they don't just move on and get distracted by the next 17 videos mm -hmm. in their newsfeed. It yeah. provides something that's useful. Uh, it can introduce your brand as a solution to a problem or a pain point. Uh, can provide helpful tutorials or establish yourself as a thought leader in the market. So common content here would be a blog post, an infographic, a helpful video. Again, it's ungated. That means you just click through to access the content. You don't have to give an email. There's no cost. That's another probably mm -hmm. major thing to mention here. Uh, that means there's a low level of commitment for that user. Um, so in this case, an image ad could suffice. Um, but as we've mentioned, video is always better. Mm -hmm. Something a little more engaging just to get that user to actually stop and see your ad yeah. and click on it. And you want to make your ad copy relatively short, uh, the, the text that's above the image. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to give them a big, long ad copy they have to look through. Oh, and you certainly want to make sure they don't have to click a see more option because yeah. that's going to just be like, eh. I mean, we all have such low attention span these days that even just clicking see more, you're like, really, how engaged am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you basically want to hook users and get them off Facebook as quickly as you can. So you could here do a promotional offer. I know I've basically said in the last one, don't do an offer, but you could offer something that's free 
or risk-free. And basically your goal here is to lure potential leads into engagement. So you could give a free trial offer for your software. You could, um, you know, basically it can be, it can work for really inexpensive purchases. Your thing with raising awareness is you want to make sure that your entry point is very low. Like mm -hmm. the user doesn't have to engage. Even providing an email address at this stage requires that user to stop and think and go, is it worth it? Yeah. I don't know. So low commitment. Um, you again, you could use an image ad if you want to. Short copy. We gave an example of a promotional ad that Dr. Pepper did that was actually a really interesting awareness campaign because it was um, an image promoting a tuition contest that they were running. It was like the tuition giveaway. And it was basically a promotion of a contest that they were running. But the interesting thing about it is it really would encourage people to share that ad amongst other people that they thought might want to enter this contest. And so it'll increase your reach. There wasn't anything. It just basically like gave you the opportunity to enter the, cost, the contest if you wanted to. But if you didn't, then, you know, mm -hmm. you certainly didn't have to. But it ultimately presented that Dr. Pepper brand as altruistic and charitable, established goodwill for the brand, and it wasn't trying to sell their product. So, you know, it just basically gave viewers, even if they didn't drink Dr. Pepper, they still got to see Dr. Pepper in a good light and be like, hey, and maybe share it amongst their friends. So that was kind of a win. Yeah. So in the consideration stage, ads in this stage generally target users who are already familiar with the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone will convert on an awareness ad, especially if your ask is really high. So for an example, a, a high cost purchase, that's gonna, it's often gonna require longer warm up. So if you're selling like a big camera for 1200 bucks, you're probably not gonna sell that instantly on Facebook with just one ad. That's right. right. And an unknown brand is also gonna require a little bit more time to establish trust to get that user to engage with you at mm -hmm. all or even follow you at all. So um, you're going to have to move users along the sales funnel, kind of in a step-by-step -step process. So at this stage, you want to provide value in exchange for, in most cases, an email address mm -hmm. so that you can collect that lead's contact information and nurture them to eventual conversion on a platform outside of Facebook. Although you can continue to use Facebook and, and just be visually in their field ongoing once they've engaged with mm -hmm. you at this stage. So one of the ways you can use this type of ad to gain leads is to use a lead magnet. That's, right. uh, that's like downloadable content. We're all familiar. We've probably seen that a million times. You have checklists, eBooks, white papers. Uh, you can entice viewers to trade their email address for something that has perceived value. We give an example in the show notes of LinkedIn. They're enticing users to give up their email uh, for an eBook. Uh, and it says, uh, it's time to rethink the buyer's journey you know, with our free ebook. And then there's like a little download link there and you can instantly do it. So you can run uh, ads directly to your lead magnet, skipping the content stage or the awareness stage, or this can just be the next step from the awareness yeah. to the consideration. Yeah. yeah, theoretically this is gonna be better like once that person has already seen that LinkedIn offers some sort of content other than just getting them onto a different platform then this would be the next step. Mm -hmm. Once they'd already kind of seen your first ad, perhaps engaged with it in some way, read some sort of content that you offered about, you know, maybe about the buyer's journey, and now you're offering a more in-depth piece or some sort of complimentary material. Again, you can use an image ad, um, short copy, really is really going to be key still here at this phase. You don't want to make it so long that the customer or viewer has to like really commit to it. Um, video again, it's always better, but um, your lead magnet really should do the talking for yeah. you. So, And in this also, I mean, you, you mentioned short copy and I agree that most times that's probably going to be the way to go. Keep in mind though, that there are times when you can use longer copy. Frank Kern, for an example, he is a huge fan of using long copy because if he's trying to get them to do something and opt in directly on Facebook, he doesn't want to take them off to a landing page where they can get lost. He'd rather if, if give them all of the points that he needs to, and they call that long copy on the ad. And so it might be, you know, a Again, page you're worth have of that. See more yeah. though on that one. I don't know. Oh, you will, but but that see more if the if the lead magnet is important enough and exciting enough, they will click it. So what we're saying is that not everything works in every situation. We're giving you real generalities, but maybe test it. 
So if you're running yeah. directly to a lead magnet, consider a short copy ad and a long copy ad. Consider a video ad with short copy, a video ad with long copy. I mean, there are different ways to do this. Yeah, and that and that's a good point. Is really um, in most cases when we do in a Facebook campaign, we typically run several versions of the same campaign just to see what what resonates more with that yeah. target audience and what happens to engage better. Um, sometimes it's, uh, like you said, more information on the, the ad level. Other times they want to click through and see that more information on another page. So another type of consideration ad is uh, entice participation with a quiz or a survey. Yeah, that's right. So quizzes and survey-based ads, the benefit here is that they have a really high engagement rate. You know, you're basically getting that user to provide you with information uh, for free that ultimately is theoretically something that they're seeing as a form of entertainment or value to them in some way, shape, or form while you're also gathering a bunch of information, but it keeps them on your ad and engaged with your message for a significantly longer time than just watching a video yeah. or watching a... Uh, uh, an, an image. And this is where Cambridge Analytica got in trouble. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they had these little personality contests that they would take, and then they would get all this information about your personality and your type, and match that with your your Facebook profile, and then, boom, they would send that off and sell to Donald Trump and all of the <laughs> other election committees. So You're basically gamifying conversion yes. and data mining yeah. when you do this. Absolutely. Um, and asking people to voluntarily give you information in exchange for some silly little, like, how much do you know about? I mean, Which we've Star all Wars seen character these. are you? Yes. How many right. Disney princesses can you possibly identify in this photo? And meanwhile, that tells the, you know, eyeshadow company that you probably are a good candidate for that princess palette line. Yeah. Uh, basically, it reduces a user's guard and, and invites them to participate in something that should hopefully be fun for them um, or, it, like I said, at least useful or engaging or helpful. Um, and theoretically, upon completion of that quiz, you really should be revealing either an insight or something that's going to drive further action for that to be a successful campaign. So, for example... You'd want to motivate them to sign up for your newsletter, for more info, for cool content. So if they like what it is that you've provided or given as an information, you know, at the end of this quiz of like, here's what your your personality says about you. And it says you should buy this princess color palette for your <laughs> eyeshadow. So that's one option. But also you can give um, some sort of enticing offer if you want to encourage a participation or, you know, a purchase. So... Um, you can use that at the end. Uh, otherwise, if you just give a survey with nothing at the end that's any sort of CTA, it's kind of more, I mean, it's building awareness, yeah. but it's not really engagement with your brand. So with this type of ad, you can use long copy or even video mm -hmm. um, uh, and make sure that it's relevant to your brand and that you're targeting your demographic. If you're doing Disney yeah. princesses and you're selling, you know, Mazda cars, it's going to be a little weird. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to just do a quiz for the sake of doing a quiz. You need it to be relevant to the people who are engaging with your brand. Um, and ideally, if you make those results complimentary and shareable, then you can encourage new leads to invite their friends to participate yeah. in that survey and share it for you. Another option that you can do here is promote a webinar. Um, we've talked about webinars uh, briefly in the past. They're basically interactive workshops or seminars that are held online. They happen in real time, so it gives the participants the opportunity to interact, um, and that can enhance the learning experience. So this is great if you're utilizing some sort of um, yeah, for a number of different platforms. Like I mean, if business, you've got business to business sales, I mean, business, if you're selling sales, equipment or even, IT, or you know, if you sell makeup, like we've been talking about mm -hmm. in a makeup tutorial that was, you know, an interactive. So um, people these days, I think, are more comfortable with the idea of a webinar. It's almost like an instant chat, but um, with something that they are able to engage with you while you present that information. Yeah. And usually with a, with a webinar or something like this, you'll you'll ask the participants to provide your email address in order to get into the webinar. And so you're mm -hmm. automatically gathering leads while giving this content. Yeah. And it lets you basically show your expertise while you're warming up those cold leads. And some people will charge a fee to attend. But, you know, that's really up to you in terms of your um, how engaged those people are that are going to be seeing your ad. If you're using this ad at too early in that sales funnel, I don't know that asking a fee is going to be um, as effective. Um but you're basically asking users to block off time and hand over something. So it's a pretty big ask. Um, image ads 
might work if you've got long copy. Um, video is, you know, probably going to be better just because it's going to give you an opportunity to really convince users why would they take the time to attend this longer version of you talking about this topic. Yeah. Um, so I think video is really going to be your best bet here on a webinar. So the last step or the last type of campaign is a conversion campaign. And it's tempting, but don't jump directly into conversion ads. I mean, everybody kind of wants to. It's, I mean, it's really like, man, I've only got $20 to spend. I'm just going to send them all a, to an ad. To yep. an ad. And, I mean, and, but how often would you purchase something if you watched a, an ad on TV, you know, Billy Bob's, you know, car lot? selling, you know, used Mazdas, yeah. how often are you be like, oh, freaking A. I'm just I was in the mar market for a yeah. used car. Yeah. yeah. So really keep in mind, conversion is the final step in a social media campaign. The first experience of your brand on Facebook should not be a sales pitch. This is, again, hearkening back to that disruptive marketing. It's going to turn off your Facebook user that's not in that mindset. So you really only want to go to conversion if you have existing interested followers on Facebook or if you have a history with a customer and you've uploaded that customer list into your Facebook audience development process. Um, and these ads really are more traditional marketing style. They're mm -hmm. designed to get that viewer to take action. So a lot of the tips are going to be pretty standard marketing you know, structure here in how to do these ads. Um, you want to create some urgency, like with most other ads, You know, keeping in mind that if you make it too fluid of like, hey, our stuff's great sometime, anytime, I don't know, whenever you want to come back and buy something, you're not going to get that person to mm -hmm. do anything immediately. So um, you basically want to use this ad to prompt the user to make a purchase. Um, and because of that, your ask is really of what you're asking of that viewer of that ad is bigger than just asking them to give you an email address or some information. And we so we added a, uh, an example of a, of a, a really good conversion ad uh, from what is that curl kit yep. uh, up on the show notes. So if you want to take a look at that, you'll see that it adds some urgency kind of says shop now that you take 25% off. I, and this is obviously somebody who already knows who curl kit is already interested in mm -hmm. beauty line and beauty products. Rather than just some, you know, if I saw this on my thing, I'd be like, uh, I don't even know what Curl Kit is. Yeah. But if you had already engaged with the brand, potentially had bought their product before, this ad that says just four days left to get June's Curl Kit basically is like, oh, okay, well, you know, the time's running out yeah. there for if I want this kit, I got to order it right away. Um, so basically, keep in mind, your ad recipient needs to be convinced on the value of what it is that you're trying to get them to engage with. So video ads work really well here especially mm -hmm. for things that are not inherently self-explanatory so again for example let's say you sell a thousand dollar marketing automation software you're probably going to need a pretty lengthy video ad in order to convince someone even that's already familiar with your brand why they need your tool whereas lower price point items things like fifty dollars to a hundred dollars those could use a lawn copy photo ad or a carousel ad um, even potentially a static image ad um, and still potentially convert, though, again, why wouldn't you use video if you have the opportunity to do so? Yeah. Well, not everybody likes to do video. You That's know, true. some people get camera shy and they think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say anything. And, and you know, it is a higher cost of entry. Yeah. That's for sure. And even if, e once you get used to it, you can usually do videos pretty quick. You just throw up your phone and say, oh, I'm going to say 10 words and be ready to go. But even for somebody who's used to doing video, it can be still <sighs> daunting to create those. So... So we have a few tips just for this type of a conversion ad, because basically your goal here is you need people to stop scrolling, pay attention, and click on your ad. So you need a few things in order to increase your click-through rate. Number one, you want to keep it short and sweet. So Adespresso studied a successful Facebook ad campaigns. Now, Adespresso is literally a platform where you can put your Facebook ads, so they kind of know everything about Facebook ads. Uh, but they found that the most popular headline is just five words long. So you want to use concise wording, get straight to the point, quickly engage the viewer, and use positive phrasing, upbeat focus, focus on the benefits, things like that. Yeah. So we gave another example in the show notes where you know their tagline basically says, your first 30 days free. So, um, But the ad in general is using um, a fair number of positive wordings. They say enjoy, free, unlimited. These are all positive 
um, upbeat wording that is going to be more in line with why a user is going to Facebook, which is to happily engage with yeah. their friends and family. So another thing that you can utilize here is some social proof. The interesting thing, so social proof is a great trust builder, particularly if someone's not completely familiar with your brand yet. Um, but you don't actually need to use a testimonial or a review because Facebook, they do that really interesting thing where if you have a sponsored ad, and if your brand happens to already have um, either someone of that viewer's friends or family or someone who's in their social network pool that has liked your brand page, it'll show above the ad, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, -and -so, like, and then the brand name. Yeah. And so it kind of instantly shows that person who's viewing that ad that, other friends of theirs already like this brand. So, okay, I guess it's, you know, pretty cool. And I, it was interesting when they first started doing that because it mimicked um, native content that would be posted that would say, you know, so-and-so likes this brand. Um, and it was like almost a notification. And now it's a notification above an ad. Yeah. So, And there's a way that you can sort of um, create this on your own. So another thing that people will do is if they see a video and it's got a lot of shares, likes, comments, they're automatically going, oh, what's happening here? Whereas mm -hmm. they see a video ad or, or uh, something and it's literally got like, you know, one like, they're not going to be like, oh, this isn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. The social proof automatically will give you more engagement. And sort of a way to manufacture this is using the same ad in multiple ad sets using the post ID. And it, I'm getting kind of technical, but ultimately in a normal campaign style, you're going to run 10, 15 different campaigns mm -hmm. with multiple ad sets with different objectives to see what happens. And when you do that, if you use the same ID, you can get uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people to comment, like, and share the ad, which gives you all of the social proof on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately, viewers are more likely to listen and take action when they see that people they trust have already committed to mm -hmm. your brand. So that's really helpful. Um, again, we already mentioned urgency at uh, a little earlier, and you've heard us refer to it in um, relation to ads and outreach and before. Basically, you're just looking to trigger a natural reaction to avoid loss. Uh, and when appropriate, time-limited incentives can encourage action. Um, another way you can do this is with um, implied scarcity. That's So instead of saying the time offers limited, in this case, it would be like there's a limited number of... We have only 100 seats left in our webinar. Yes. Yeah. And that's right. And so that basically gives that um, viewer, again, that same sense of urgency to say, oh, well, I better do it before it goes, before it goes away. You can use a uh, copy that evokes curiosity. Mm. Uh, so Facebook users aren't actively shopping. Remember, they're there to look at cat videos and what their cousins did last Saturday night and how much their their buddies drink or whatever. You know, yeah. They're not really interested in shopping. Or um, solutions. They're not yeah. actively looking for solutions. But if your ad promises a solution to a common pain point, uh, it can catch the scroller's eye. So we put an example up of America American Massage Therapy Association, obviously targeting other massage therapists. massage therapists. And the ad itself basically says self-care tips for massage therapists. The interesting thing is it's basically something that if you've targeted users with massage therapists listed as their occupation, um, the ad itself in that newsfeed basically is suggesting that therapists may develop health, health problems if they don't take certain actions and, you know, to protect their own health. Mm -hmm. And so that, from a standpoint of if that was your career, you might not necessarily be on Facebook thinking about taking better care of yourself, but you go, oh, huh, well, I'm a massage therapist and mm -hmm. self-care tips. Well, that's beneficial and helpful. I wonder what that is. So it can be, um, it can really work really well for engaging a specific target demographic. It's, it's another version of the 11 o'clock news tease. You know, five mm -hmm. things in your refrigerator will kill you before you're 40. That's right. Yeah. Tune in at 11, right? <laughs> it's the exact same philosophy along that, but you can narrow it down to a very specific person. Soccer moms who are, who know, who know how to keep their kids alive, know these three things. And you're yeah. like, well, oh, I got to know those three things. <laughs> I'm a soccer mom, <laughs> you know. So you can use questions to hook people. So that would be, you know, basically to get them started reading and continue that path of reading from one line to the next. So are you frustrated by, do you struggle to, tired of? And again, it's not like you're going for that 1980s infomercial. So it's mm. not like, you know, 
Are, are you, you tired s- of dealing with garden hoses? And she's like, ah, flopping all over the place yeah. trying to get yeah. a garden hose. Yeah. But ultimately, the idea here is you want to basically make that reader kind of start nodding their subconscious head in yeah. agreement like, yeah, I totally am. And at that point, you know, you got them hooked. But there are some Facebook guidelines you got to keep in mind. You can't call out specific groups. You can't say something like, are you a massage therapist looking for cancer treatment? I mean, they're going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that, <laughs> makes, <too> creepy. <laughs> that makes you look really creepy. And Facebook doesn't want to see those kinds of ads and your ads will get disapproved. So take a look at their guidelines. You can't call out specific sectors, but you can say certain things to attract that group, right? You can say cancer treatments for massage therapists. And you're like, well, Jesus, I'm a massage therapist and I have cancer. I want to see what's going on there. <laughs> Why do I possibly need that? I don't know. And do massage therapists get a lot of... Anyway, yeah, no. well, let's move on. <laughs> All right. So now you know what kind of ad to run to reach your objective. It's time to dig into crafting the ad, right? Yeah, let's get started next week. Oh, man. Just yeah. when it was about to get good. Next week, we'll take you step by step through the process of creating a Facebook ad from setting up your campaign and setting up your budgets to measuring your success. You definitely do not want to miss that one. So be sure to head over to growthmarketeracademy.com and check out the show notes and links to the resources we talked about today. And if you've gotten useful tips or anything helpful or just because you like our podcast because we're awesome, then make sure to rate it on whatever platform that you're listening on. I'm Ryan Eldridge. And I'm Andrea Eldridge. Thanks for listening to Growth Marketer Academy. This has been Growth Marketer Academy with Ryan and Andrea Eldridge.